Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Ed. Um, yes, yeah, so this is work with Stefan Leutniger, Andy Davison at the Dyson Robotics Lab at Imperial College London. Okay. So, so object recognition is, is typically the task of recognizing an object uh, based on a single image. Um, so I work in a robotics lab, so what I'm, I'm, I'm used to dealing with uh, image sequences from a moving camera. And therefore the problem becomes that of uh, multi-view object recognition. So given this sequence of images, I want to be able to recognize the object uh, by taking advantage of this uh, rich, uh, this rich extra amount of data from these images which are observed. Um, another factor in, in robotics is that you have the ability to actually move the camera around the object actively. Um, so, for example, in this case, um, should the white camera move to the green position or the blue position in the next step? And we want to, to come up with a way of recognizing the object as quickly as possible. And this is known as active recognition. So the contributions of this work are, um, we propose a, 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 met a method for multi-view recognition. Second, we, we expand this to incorporate an active recognition framework. Um, and third, our system allows for unconstrained camera trajectories over the object, rather than being constrained around some fixed path. And this is where our key novelty lies. So before I talk about the method, I'm going to introduce the experimental setup to help you visualize the process. So we use the ModelNet data set, which is um, a data set of thousands of 3D CAD uh, object meshes, and we use this for both training and testing. Um, and for each object, we embed it within a spherical coordinate system, which is discretized into 30 degrees steps. And then we render synthetic images of the object from each of these viewpoints. And these images can be depth images or intensity images with some kind of shading, as in these examples. And our method, our method works for both imaging modes. So there's some existing work which addresses the multi-view recognition problem. Um, for example, at last year's CVPR, one of my favorite papers was the 3D shape nets work, whereby images are fused into a volumetric representation. And this is then passed through a deep belief network to um, give an object, uh, an object class output. Uh, whilst this is great for generative methods such as object synthesis and uh, shape completion, it's not, it doesn't perform so well for recognition compared to some view-based approaches. So for example, uh, ICCV last year there was a paper called Multi-View CNMs, um, and what they did is they rendered a single image from 360 degrees uh, path around the object, um, and then perform max pooling over the different views. So where max pooling is typically done within a single image, they did max pooling over a number of different viewpoints to compress the image sequence into a single model, which can then be classified. <clears throat> the problem with this approach is that there's this assumption that the testing and training trajectories follow the same paths, um, and therefore this does not allow for these unconstrained trajectories which I'm trying to get. So this leads on to the first challenge. Okay, given a database of multi-view images, how can we create a multi-view recognition framework which includes both the view-based learning and the unconstrained camera trajectories? So I want to capitalize on the strengths of these view-based methods but allow for all possible trajectories over the object. So one naive solution to this might be to say, okay, let's take all of these images, concatenate them into a single long vector, um, and then train a CNN to, to classify this particular vector. Um, the problem with this approach is you would need to uh, train on over all possible camera paths um, and lengths, which is highly unscalable, prone to overfitting, um, and we might have a different number of images in this length, um, so the, the input to the neural network might have different lengths, and this is something which uh, neural networks can't readily embrace. So our solution is to, during training, train only on image pairs, and then during testing, what we do is we decompose the image sequence into a set of image pairs, classify the image pairs independently, and then combine the results. So rather than having to train across the entire sequence, we're only training on the image pairs, which makes the whole thing tractable. So for example, given this test image sequence on the left here, um, we want to create a set of all the image pairs that are available from this sequence. So in this example, we have four images in the sequence, which leads to six pairs of images. And then each image is passed through a CNN, classified, and then we combine the results together um, with a weighted average to give the actual class output of that 
uh, individual object. So here's how we actually classify each image pair. We send the pair through a Siamese CNN with shared weights in the convolutional layers to speed up the training. And then we're bringing the rotation angle between the two images with one hot encoding, and this enriches the representation of the image pair. We pass all of this through a, fully, a set of fully connected layers, and then the output is the class prediction of that particular uh, uh, object based on just the pair of images. So we did some experiments on multi-view recognition by taking images from a fixed trajectory at an elevation of 30 degrees around uh, the object. Um, and we trained and tested on the ModelNet 40 dataset containing 40 object classes. And the recognition results reconfirm that the view-based approach does indeed outperform the volumetric approach. Um, but also we're showing that our method outperforms the multi-view CNN approach, even though our method is capable of dealing with arbitrary camera trajectories. So the first challenge was how can we recognize the object from this image sequence? And the second is, okay, how can we, um, given, a, given this method for pairwise and multi-view recognition, how can we choose each next viewpoint to move the camera to in order to recognize the object as quickly as possible? So let's imagine we've observed this image of the chair, and there are now four adjacent viewpoints to which the camera can move. What we want to do is we want to assign a cost to each of these viewpoints, indicating how good or bad it would be to move the camera to that viewpoint in the next step. But of course, we don't actually know what these, uh, these objects look like from these different viewpoints, because we haven't moved the camera there yet, so these are unobserved images. But what we do know is the rotation angle between the current image and all of these other viewpoints. So what we want to do is to predict the cost of moving to each of these viewpoints by training a CNN to take as input this input image and output one cost per viewpoint. So we need to gather some training data to train this particular network. And what we do is we take an image from our training set and a rotation angle and then we find the image corresponding to, to what the object would look like from that second uh, viewpoint. This image pair is then sent through the pairwise classifier, which I just introduced, which outputs a distribution for the class prediction. And we then compare this prediction to the ground truth for that object. We then compute the cross entropy between these two distributions. So the cross entropy gives an indication as to um, how good the pairwise classifier was at classifying these two images. And this becomes one training datum. So we have an input image, we have a rotation angle, and then we have a cross entropy. And this measure of cross entropy is what we use as the cost of moving from one particular image over a particular rotation angle. So we can now predict, given an image, how good it would be to rotate the camera around to a particular um, a view, uh, next viewpoint. <clears throat> so this gives us the pairwise cost, but in fact, of course, what we want to do is um, have a cost for the entire trajectory, so that we can choose the, the trajectory with the lowest overall cost. So we define this trajectory cost as the summation of all the pairwise costs over the, all of the images, image pairs in the trajectory. So we now want to um, choose the optimum trajectory. So to visualize this method, I'm going to represent the spherical coordinate system uh, in a 2D grid. So here, each square on the right represents a discrete viewpoint of the object. And so if the starting viewpoint is in the top left, then all the other viewpoints are, of course, unvisited for now. Um, but, there, but for a given uh, total path length, for example, seven in here, um, there are many paths over which the camera can, can move, and we want to find the best one. So remember that for any given image, we can compute the cost for all the other viewpoints of visiting that viewpoint at some point within the path. Um, here the, the cost indicated by the red squares. So given this first image, what we want to, to do is to decide which adjacent viewpoint to move to on the next step. Um, and we do this based on a, a given total path length, i.e. the maximum number of images allowed in our sequence. Um, and for each of the three adjacent viewpoints, what we do is we create a list of all the paths which would be allowed for after visiting this viewpoint. And then we calculate the cost of that particular path. Um, and then, uh, as discussed, this is, this is simply the summation of all the pairwise costs within that particular path. 
So in this example, let's say the path with the lowest cost is the one indicated by the blue line. Um, we then choose the adjacent viewpoint which allows for this particular path and we move the camera to that viewpoint on the next step. And now that we have a, a second image in our sequence, uh, we can then update the cost of all the unvisited viewpoints such that each cost is the sum of the pairwise costs with the existing path. So the process then repeats, evaluating each adjacent viewpoint and choosing the one which allows for the path of the lowest cost. And each time a new image is observed, the costs are updated. And finally, the camera reaches its destination. So we then ran some experiments to evaluate how much of an impact our trajectory optimization had on recognition results. And this time we allowed for unconstrained trajectories over the object. We used two baselines to compare our method to. First, a method which randomly chooses uh, the next viewpoint to move to, and then a greedy method which chooses the next viewpoint based on the instantaneous local pairwise costs without considering the cost of the overall trajectory. And we can see that the two active methods outperform the random baseline, but optimizing over the entire trajectory gives the best performance. And finally, here are some example trajectories computed by our method. So on the left hand side, we have the grayscale rendering of the object. On the right hand side, we have a depth uh, image of the object. Um, and our method works for both modalities. And the key thing here to observe is that we are allowing for arbitrary, unconstrained trajectories over the object while, rather than being limited by any particular path that's predefined. So to summarize, we propose a new method for multi-view recognition which trains only on image pairs. Um, we then extend this method to an active recognition framework by predicting the cross entropy from the pairwise classifier and our decomposition of each sequence into a set of image pairs allows for tractable training of unconstrained trajectories. So come and have a chat with me at Poster 3 if you want to find out a little bit more. And thanks very much for listening.